Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about important factors when considering an energy upgrade to your historic or vintage home here in the Northwest. What differentiates the Pacific Northwest homes from other homes in other climates? Well, you know, when you think about the Pacific Northwest, there's some beautiful gifts we have here, right? We have uh, um, amazing moderate temperatures. In Arizona, we have hot, hot temperatures and cool temperatures. You have really moderated weather. You also have a significant amount of rainfall, but the rainfall you have here is um, it's more consistent and long-lasting, cloudy weather that it's cool, which means challenges at drying materials. So we have cool weather with wet uh, mm -hmm. conditions, high relative humidities. Um, we also are getting a little bit colder in the uh, in the winters. It seems at times you guys are getting snow here and there, and then you're getting some uh, increased rains uh, that, that kind of cycle. I would say our weather here just makes buildings challenged for long-term durability, and mostly because the biggest enemy houses in general have is the mismanagement of water, whether it's generated by interior, by occupants, or exterior climates. Because their ability to be assaulting wood-based wood, wood -based products, sealants and caulking, um, masonry, brick, all of them are challenged by water. And you have an abundance of that here. So here is, is it's moisture is the enemy. Moisture is the enemy. In every climate zone, you just get more of it. Okay. Which means that the climate here has greater chance of seeing faster failures or faster challenges. Okay. In the desert, we'd see a lot less Right. Uh, for the same drier. infection. Yeah. When, when it's cold out, it's dry. Correct. I mean, in the Yukon, gee, I mean, it's right. you're, we used to have kettles on the stove to keep the moisture in the air from drying us out inside of our, our house. Correct. And right. here, your winters are wet and your summers are, are uh, moderate. Um, you'll get, you get sh very shorter, shorter drying cycles. So as you rain a lot, you need days and air to move and dry buildings, and you don't get as much of either one. So in, in other climate zones, when they're doing a remodel, what we do here a lot is that we bring in dehumidifiers and dehumidify the places. Do other construction professionals do that in other parts of the country? Yeah, it just depends on the climate zone. So the east coast, of course, central regions of the U.S., anytime the building is experiencing wet weather. So if you have rainfall, Portland, even Californian markets. But if the building's fairly dry during the construction mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. we can leave the dehumidification off. If summer construction happens here, you can leave the dehumidification off. So, so many things are driven by weather and, uh, and the challenges that that takes as when you have the building open, that creates a need for dehumidification, but I'm a great big fan of dehumidification. Um, drying a building down prior to the next yeah, phase, you know, before you put the drywall on or before you start doing the painting and moving on to trim before you put the flooring down. You know, managing humidity is ideal for uh, the building assembly. I've, much se less I've seen the results of not doing that. Mm -hmm. Even a year and a half later, Correct. when the cabinets start to separate from the ceiling and you get that line right. between the crown mold and the ceiling, yeah. I've seen I've seen the direct results of Doors, that. cabinets, mm -hmm. and even finished floors. Mm -hmm. So we ask someone to acclimate the building. Right. Um, it's pretty hard to acclimate the building when it's humid and wet because outside. Because we're still so. building with green lumber. Yeah, sometimes. That's a big, well, and drywall too. I yeah. mean, we're introducing a lot of that. So I think materials, you know, buildings absorb water, right? So building materials drywall can hold water, mm -hmm. wood holds water, plaster in older homes. So buildings can take on a little bit of moisture and give it back up. And what we want to do is to find kind of an equilibrium with buildings. Well, the way I look at it is when I'm remodeling a historic home and I'm a big, doing a big remodel, the rest of the home is static and it will suck the moisture out and now I've affected the entire home. So right. by keeping those dehumidifiers going, I'm keeping the rest of that home static. It's not drawing that moisture out. Yes. I'm drawing it out before it goes in and affects the rest of the home. Very Because it might take a year or two for it to become static again. Yeah. Is yeah. that? Yeah, is acclim that acclimating a building is a, is, a, is a great challenge, of course, as you increase size, change lifestyle, yeah. add cooking, and yeah. they spend more time cooking, right. have another yeah. child, uh, have a dog. Uh, decide to install aquari aquariums. Everything that we do, you know, we're, we're actually, you know, internal combustion engines basically, right? I take in carbon and my output would be carbon dioxide water vapor. Mm -hmm. So as I'm doing that all the time, lifestyle affects people's uh, interaction with the building and, and cooking more. We're all watching the cooking channels. We've become experts at cooking, you know. So we're at home cooking and boiling, and so that all generates moisture. As you do a retrofit into a building, you've changed the way it behaved before. Mm -hmm. So now if I make a building tighter and I spend more time home cooking, you can imagine elevated levels of moisture are also part of the game. So what you're doing is just a natural part of, of getting ready for the next phase. Great. Good. Awesome. Great Thank pleasure. you so much. That, that was, was awesome. You. Thank you, sir.